Have you ever found yourself feeling drained after interacting with certain people? Or perhaps you've felt overwhelmed by the emotions of others? You're not alone. In today's fast-paced world, it's easy to get caught up in the emotional roller coaster of those around us. But fear not, because in this video, we're diving deep into the transformative wisdom of Buddhism to explore powerful strategies for protecting ourselves from the emotional energy of others. Picture this, you're at a crowded party, surrounded by friends and acquaintances. Suddenly, you notice your mood shifting as you absorb the stress and negativity radiating from those around you. It's like a heavy cloud descending upon you, leaving you feeling drained and anxious. Sound familiar? So, you're in the right place. Throughout this video, we'll uncover the secrets to maintaining your emotional well-being, even in the most challenging situations. But before we dive in, let's set a goal together. Our target? A whopping 1,000 likes on this video. Why? Because by spreading this valuable knowledge, we can empower even more people to reclaim their emotional sovereignty and live with greater peace and resilience. So hit that like button and let's embark on this journey together. Now, you might be wondering, what exactly is the key to protecting ourselves from the emotions of others? Well, it starts with recognizing our own limits. Buddhism teaches us the importance of understanding that we can't control the thoughts, emotions, or actions of those around us. Instead, we'll learn how to set compassionate boundaries and cultivate healthy relationships built on mutual respect. Throughout this video series, we'll explore practical techniques for navigating emotional boundaries with wisdom and grace. From the power of mindful observation to the practice of non-attachment, each lesson will offer valuable insights and actionable advice to help you reclaim your emotional autonomy. But wait, there's more. We'll also delve into the art of active listening and empathy, essential skills for offering support without getting entangled in the emotional struggles of others. Plus, we'll uncover the transformative potential of loving-kindness meditation, a powerful practice for cultivating compassion and non-attachment. So if you're ready to take control of your emotional landscape, hit that subscribe button and join us on this journey of self-discovery and empowerment. Together, we'll unlock the secrets to protecting ourselves from the emotional energy of others and embrace a life of greater peace, resilience, and compassion. Let's make it happen. Lesson 1. Recognizing Limits A Buddhist Perspective Understanding Emotional Boundaries Emotions, they're like waves in the ocean, ever-changing and sometimes overwhelming. Have you ever found yourself trying to control someone else's emotions? It's like trying to hold on to water in your hands. Futile and frustrating. But what if there's a different way to approach it? Welcome to part two of our journey where we explore the transformative wisdom of Buddhism in navigating emotional boundaries. The illusion of control. Imagine this, you're in a conversation, and suddenly the other person gets upset. Your instinct may be to try and fix it to change their mood. But here's the truth. You can't control how others feel. It's like trying to tame a wild river. You'll only end up exhausted. Buddhism teaches us to recognize this illusion of control and instead focus on our own responses. Letting go of fixing. Picture this. You're holding onto a helium balloon, desperately trying to keep it from floating away. That's how it feels when we try to fix others' emotions. But what if we simply let go? Buddhism encourages us to release this burden of fixing and embrace the reality of our limited influence. It's like setting down that balloon and feeling the weight lift off our shoulders. Compassionate boundaries. Now, imagine drawing a circle around yourself not to shut others out, but to protect your own emotional well-being. That's what compassionate boundaries are all about. Buddhism teaches us to set boundaries with kindness, fostering healthy relationships and mutual respect. It's like building a fence around a garden, nurturing growth while keeping out unwanted weeds. Mindful observation. Have you ever watched clouds drift across the sky without trying to hold on to them? That's mindfulness, observing without judgment. Buddhism invites us to practice mindful observation of our emotions, creating space between ourselves and our reactions. 
It's like stepping back from a painting to see the bigger picture. Non-attachment in practice. Imagine holding a fragile bird in your hand. You don't grasp too tightly or you'll crush it. That's non-attachment, engaging without clinging. Buddhism encourages us to offer support without trying to change others' emotions. It's like being there for someone without suffocating them with our expectations. Embracing impermanence. Now, think about a river flowing, always changing, always moving. That's the nature of emotions, transient and fleeting. Buddhism teaches us to embrace this impermanence, knowing that feelings come and go like passing clouds. It's like watching a sunset, beautiful in its ephemerality. Finding inner peace. In a world where emotions can overwhelm us, Buddhism offers a path to inner peace. By recognizing the limits of our influence, setting compassionate boundaries, and practicing mindful observation, we can navigate the emotional landscape with wisdom and grace. So, let's embark on this journey together towards a deeper understanding of ourselves and others. Lesson two, letting go of control, embracing non-attachment. Are you tired of feeling stressed because you can't control everything around you? Do you wish you could handle life's ups and downs with more grace and calm? Today, we're diving into a powerful lesson from Buddhism that can help you achieve just that. Imagine trying to hold on to a handful of water. The tighter you squeeze, the more it slips through your fingers. This is what it's like when we try to control others' emotions and actions. The harder we try, the more frustrated we become. Welcome to Wisdom Woven, where we share insights to help you lead a more peaceful and balanced life. If you enjoy our content, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us bring you more valuable lessons. In Buddhism, one of the key teachings is non-attachment. This means accepting that we can't control everything, especially other people's feelings and actions. By letting go of this need for control, we can find true peace. When we try to manage how others feel or act, we set ourselves up for disappointment. People are complex and unpredictable. Understanding that their emotions and actions are beyond our control can save us a lot of heartache. Think about a time when you tried to change someone's mind or mood. How did it go? Chances are it didn't work out as you hoped. This is because people have their own paths and their own journeys. Respecting this is a form of compassion. Non-attachment doesn't mean you stop caring about others. On the contrary, it means you care in a healthier way. You offer your support and presence without the need to fix or change them. This approach is more respectful and loving. One way to practice non-attachment is through mindfulness. By staying present and observing without judgment, you can interact with others without getting tangled in their emotional storms. This keeps your peace intact. Another powerful tool is the practice of loving-kindness meditation. This involves sending goodwill and positive thoughts to others, wishing them happiness and peace. It helps you cultivate a compassionate attitude without trying to control them. Remember, your role is to be a supportive presence, not a fixer. By accepting this, you can avoid the frustration that comes from trying to control the uncontrollable. This shift in perspective can be liberating. Setting compassionate boundaries is also crucial. These boundaries aren't about shutting people out. They're about protecting your own well-being while still being there for others. This balance is essential for healthy relationships. When you let go of the need to control, you create space for more genuine connections. You can be fully present with others, offering empathy and support without the burden of trying to manage their emotions. Buddhism teaches that everything is impermanent, including emotions. By embracing this idea, you can navigate life's emotional landscape with more ease. You understand that feelings come and go, and you don't need to control them. Accepting impermanence allows you to respond to situations with flexibility and grace. You're not stuck in a rigid mindset trying to force outcomes. Instead, you flow with life's natural rhythm. This doesn't mean you become passive. Instead, you take action from a place of calm and clarity not from a place of desperation to control. This approach leads to more effective and peaceful interactions. 
Non-attachment also helps you focus on your own growth. When you're not preoccupied with controlling others, you have more energy to work on yourself. This self-focus is not selfish. It's essential for personal development. Practicing non-attachment can also improve your mental health. You're less likely to experience anxiety and stress because you're not trying to control things beyond your reach. This leads to a more balanced and peaceful mind. As you embrace non-attachment, you'll find that your relationships improve. People feel more respected and understood when you're not trying to control them. This mutual respect fosters deeper and more meaningful connections. The journey to non-attachment is ongoing. It's about making small, consistent efforts to let go of control and embrace the present moment. Over time, these efforts add up, leading to significant positive changes in your life. So, next time you find yourself trying to control someone else's emotions or actions, pause. Take a deep breath and remind yourself of the wisdom of non-attachment. Let go and watch how your peace and happiness grow. Thank you for joining us on Wisdom Woven. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. Together, we can continue exploring these profound teachings and enhance our lives with their wisdom. Lesson 3, Compassionate Boundaries, Cultivating Healthy Relationships. Have you ever felt overwhelmed by someone else's emotions? Maybe a friend's sadness or a family member's anger left you feeling drained. It's easy to get caught up in other people's feelings, but Buddhism teaches us a valuable lesson, setting compassionate boundaries. These boundaries help us support others without sacrificing our own emotional health. Imagine you're a sponge soaking up water. If you soak up too much, you'll become heavy and saturated. Similarly, taking on too much of other people's emotions can weigh us down. Compassionate boundaries act like a protective barrier, allowing us to be present for others while staying emotionally balanced. Setting boundaries might sound harsh, but it's actually an act of kindness. When we set clear limits, we communicate that we care about our own well-being as well as the well-being of others. This balance fosters healthier, more respectful relationships. One simple way to set a boundary is to take a step back and breathe. When someone is sharing their emotions with you, focus on your breath. This keeps you grounded and prevents you from absorbing their emotions. Another effective technique is to visualize a protective bubble around you. This bubble allows you to listen and support others without letting their emotions penetrate your own emotional space. It's like having an emotional raincoat that keeps you dry in a storm of feelings. It's also important to communicate your boundaries clearly and kindly. You can say something like, I understand you're upset and I'm here for you but I need a moment to collect my thoughts. This lets the other person know you care, but also need to take care of yourself. Practicing mindfulness can help reinforce these boundaries. When you notice yourself getting overwhelmed, take a moment to check in with your own feelings. Ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? How can I take care of myself in this moment? Buddhism emphasizes the importance of self-compassion. Treat yourself with the same kindness and understanding that you would offer a friend. Remember, you deserve the same care and respect that you give to others. Consider integrating short meditation sessions into your daily routine. Even five minutes of focused breathing can help center your mind and reinforce your emotional boundaries. This practice builds resilience and makes it easier to stay balanced in challenging situations. Remember, it's okay to say no. If someone's emotions are too much for you to handle, it's perfectly fine to set a firm boundary. Saying, I'm not in a place to support you right now, is a compassionate way to take care of your own needs. When you set boundaries, you're not only protecting yourself, but also teaching others to respect and value your emotional space. This mutual respect strengthens relationships and creates a more supportive environment for everyone. Sometimes, Taking a break from emotionally intense situations is necessary. Step outside, take a walk, or engage in an activity you enjoy. This helps you recharge and approach the situation with a fresh perspective. Journaling can be a powerful tool for processing your own emotions. Write down your feelings and reflect on the boundaries you need to set. 
This practice can provide clarity and reinforce your commitment to compassionate boundaries. Engage in activities that bring you joy and relaxation. Whether it's reading, painting, or spending time in nature, these activities nourish your soul and help maintain your emotional balance. Surround yourself with supportive people who respect your boundaries. Positive relationships reinforce your emotional well-being and provide a safe space for you to express your needs. Practice gratitude daily. Focusing on what you're thankful for shifts your mindset and strengthens your emotional resilience. This makes it easier to set and maintain healthy boundaries. It's important to remember that setting boundaries is a skill that takes time to develop. Be patient with yourself and celebrate your progress no matter how small. Every step you take towards healthier boundaries is a step towards a more balanced life. Encourage others to set their own boundaries as well. This creates a culture of mutual respect and understanding, making it easier for everyone to navigate their emotions healthily. Reflect on the benefits of compassionate boundaries regularly. Notice how they improve your relationships and enhance your overall well-being. This reflection reinforces your commitment to maintaining them. Lastly, always approach yourself with kindness and understanding. You're doing your best to navigate complex emotional landscapes. By setting compassionate boundaries, you're creating a foundation for healthier, happier relationships. Lesson 4. The Power of Mindful Observation Mindful observation is a powerful tool that helps us stay grounded and present. By paying close attention to our surroundings and our inner experiences, we can navigate our emotions and interactions with others more effectively. This part will guide you through the basics and benefits of mindful observation in a way that's easy to understand and apply to your daily life. Imagine you're in a bustling coffee shop. There are people chatting, the barista is making drinks, and the scent of freshly brewed coffee fills the air. Instead of getting lost in the noise, take a moment to observe everything without judgment. Notice the sounds, the smells, and the sights. This is mindful observation. Mindfulness is all about being present in the moment. When we practice mindful observation, we focus on what's happening right now without getting caught up in our thoughts or emotions. This helps us stay calm and centered, even in stressful situations. One simple way to practice mindful observation is to pay attention to your breath. Sit comfortably, close your eyes, and take a deep breath in. Notice how the air feels as it enters your nose and fills your lungs. Then, slowly exhale and feel the air leaving your body. Repeat this a few times. You can also practice mindful observation while walking. As you walk, notice the sensation of your feet touching the ground. Feel the movement of your legs and the rhythm of your steps. Pay attention to the sounds around you, like birds chirping or leaves rustling in the wind. Mindful observation isn't just about external experiences. It's also about observing your thoughts and emotions without getting swept away by them. When you notice a strong emotion, like anger or sadness, take a moment to observe it. How does it feel in your body? Where do you feel it the most? Instead of trying to push the emotion away, simply acknowledge it. Say to yourself, I am feeling angry right now or this is sadness. By recognizing and naming your emotions, you can prevent them from taking over and causing unnecessary stress. Another benefit of mindful observation is that it helps you become more aware of your surroundings. This heightened awareness can lead to a greater appreciation of the world around you. You might notice the beauty of a flower, the vibrant colors of a sunset, or the intricate details of a piece of art. Mindful observation can also improve your relationships. When you're fully present with someone, you're able to listen more deeply and respond with greater empathy. This creates a stronger connection and fosters mutual understanding and respect. Practicing mindful observation regularly can reduce stress and anxiety. By focusing on the present moment, you can break the cycle of worrying about the past or the future. This leads to a calmer and more balanced state of mind. You don't need to set aside a lot of time for mindful observation. Even a few minutes a day can make a big difference. You can practice it during everyday activities, like brushing your teeth, washing dishes, 
or eating a meal. When you eat mindfully, for example, pay attention to the flavors, textures, and smells of your food. Chew slowly and savor each bite. This not only enhances your enjoyment of the meal, but also helps you develop a healthier relationship with food. Mindful observation can also be practiced in nature. Spend some time outside, whether it's in a park, a forest, or your backyard. Observe the plants, animals, and the changing weather. Feel the warmth of the sun on your skin or the cool breeze against your face. Journaling is another way to enhance your mindful observation practice. Write down your observations, thoughts, and feelings. This can help you process your experiences and gain insights into your inner world. Remember, the goal of mindful observation is not to achieve a particular state of mind, but to simply be aware of whatever is happening in the present moment. It's about observing without judgment and letting go of the need to control or change anything. As you continue to practice mindful observation, you'll likely notice a shift in your perspective. You'll become more attuned to the subtle details of your environment and your inner experiences. This can lead to a greater sense of peace and fulfillment. Incorporating mindful observation into your daily routine doesn't require any special equipment or training. It's a simple yet powerful practice that anyone can do. The more you practice, the easier it becomes to stay present and mindful in any situation. So, take a moment right now to pause and observe. Notice your surroundings, your breath, and your thoughts. Embrace the present moment with curiosity and openness. This is the power of mindful observation. Thank you for joining us in this journey of exploring mindful observation. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel, Wisdom Woven. Stay tuned for more insightful and transformative content. Lesson 5, Non-Attachment in Practice offering support without fixing. Have you ever felt the heavy weight of someone else's emotions, wanting so desperately to fix their problems but feeling powerless? It's a common experience, one that often leaves us drained and stressed. But what if there was a way to offer support without getting entangled in the emotional turbulence of others? Buddhism provides profound insights on this, teaching us the practice of non-attachment. Non-attachment doesn't mean we stop caring. On the contrary, it allows us to care deeply without being overwhelmed. It's about offering our presence and compassion without trying to control or fix others' emotions. Imagine being a steady rock in a rushing river, providing support without being swept away. Consider the story of a friend who is going through a breakup. Our immediate reaction might be to offer advice to try and mend their broken heart. But often, what they need most is someone to simply be there, to listen and validate their feelings. This is the essence of non-attachment. Non-attachment allows us to be a calm presence, like a lighthouse guiding ships through a storm. We can shine our light, offering guidance and support, but we don't need to steer the ship. This way, we remain grounded, maintaining our own emotional balance. In Buddhism, the concept of non-attachment is central. It teaches us that clinging to outcomes or trying to control others' emotions only leads to suffering. By letting go, we free ourselves and others to experience their emotions fully and naturally. Imagine you are a gardener. You can water and care for your plants, but you cannot force them to grow. They will bloom in their own time. Similarly, we can offer our support to others but we cannot force them to change or feel better. Practicing non-attachment starts with mindfulness. Pay attention to your own emotions and reactions when someone shares their struggles. Notice if you feel a strong urge to fix or change their situation. This awareness is the first step in practicing non-attachment. Mindful breathing can help in these moments. When you feel the urge to fix someone's problem, take a few deep breaths. This simple act can create space between you and the impulse to act, allowing you to respond more thoughtfully and compassionately. Remember, offering support is not about having the right answers. It's about being present and showing that you care. Often, your silent presence can be more powerful than any words of advice. Being there, fully attentive and compassionate, is a true gift. 
Empathy is key in practicing non-attachment. Put yourself in the other person's shoes, not to fix their problems, but to understand their feelings. This empathy fosters a deep connection without the need to change anything. Buddhism also teaches the importance of acceptance. Accept the person as they are with all their emotions and struggles. This acceptance is a form of love and compassion that doesn't require any action beyond being present. Non-attachment doesn't mean indifference. It's about loving without conditions, supporting without strings attached. It's about respecting others' emotional journeys and trusting that they have the strength to navigate their own path. You can practice non-attachment through loving-kindness meditation. This meditation involves sending thoughts of love and compassion to yourself and others. It helps cultivate a mindset of support and care without attachment. Picture yourself as a tree with deep roots. The wind may blow fiercely, but you remain grounded and strong. You provide shelter and comfort without being uprooted by the storm. This is the strength of non-attachment. Setting boundaries is another aspect of non-attachment. It's okay to protect your own emotional well-being. By setting clear boundaries, you can offer support without depleting your own energy. Non-attachment helps prevent burnout. Constantly trying to fix others' problems can lead to emotional exhaustion. By practicing non-attachment, you preserve your own well-being, enabling you to be a more effective support. Encourage others to express their feelings openly. Create a safe space for them to share without judgment. This openness can be incredibly healing, and it's a powerful way to offer support without needing to change their emotions. Letting go of the need to fix allows others to find their own solutions. It empowers them to grow and learn from their experiences. Your trust in their abilities can be a source of great strength and encouragement. Remember, it's okay not to have all the answers. Sometimes, the most supportive thing you can do is to simply listen and acknowledge their feelings. This validation can be incredibly comforting and healing. Non-attachment is a practice that takes time and patience. Be gentle with yourself as you learn this new way of supporting others. It's a journey of growth and self-discovery, leading to deeper connections and emotional resilience. In conclusion, offering support without trying to fix others' emotions is a profound act of love and compassion. By practicing non-attachment, you can be a steady, calming presence in others' lives, providing genuine support while maintaining your own emotional balance. This practice not only benefits those you support, but also fosters your own inner peace and well-being. Lesson 6. Active Listening and Empathy Active listening and empathy are essential tools in navigating relationships and protecting ourselves from the emotional impact of others. Buddhism provides valuable insights into how we can develop these skills, fostering deeper connections while maintaining our inner peace. Imagine a conversation where you truly feel heard. The other person isn't just waiting for their turn to speak. They're fully engaged with what you're saying. This is the essence of active listening, a practice that allows us to be fully present for others. Active listening starts with paying attention. When someone is speaking to you, focus on their words, tone, and body language. Put away distractions, such as your phone or other tasks, and give them your undivided attention. A crucial aspect of active listening is showing genuine interest. Nod, make eye contact, and use verbal affirmations like, I see, or that sounds challenging to show you're engaged. This helps the speaker feel valued and understood. Reflecting back what you've heard is another powerful tool. Phrases like, so what I'm hearing is, or it sounds like you're feeling, can confirm your understanding and clarify any misunderstandings. Empathy, closely linked to active listening, involves putting yourself in someone else's shoes. It's about understanding their feelings and experiences from their perspective, which can deepen your connection and provide comfort. In Buddhism, empathy is seen as a way to connect with the suffering of others without losing ourselves in their emotions. It's about being there for them while maintaining our own emotional balance. One simple way to practice empathy is through mindful observation. Notice the other person's emotions without judgment. 
This allows you to respond with compassion rather than getting caught up in their emotional state. Empathy can be nurtured through meditation practices such as loving-kindness meditation. This involves sending positive thoughts and wishes for happiness to yourself and others, which can increase your capacity for empathy over time. When practicing active listening and empathy, it's important to maintain healthy boundaries. This ensures that you're supportive without sacrificing your own well-being. Remember, you can be there for others without taking on their emotional burdens. A common pitfall is the urge to fix other people's problems. Instead of offering solutions right away, try to simply be present and listen. Sometimes, people just need to feel heard and validated. If you feel overwhelmed by someone else's emotions, take a moment to ground yourself. Deep breathing or a short meditation can help you regain your emotional equilibrium and stay present in the conversation. Engaging in self-reflection can also enhance your empathy skills. Consider your own emotional reactions and how they might influence your interactions with others. This awareness can lead to more compassionate and effective communication. Remember, practicing empathy doesn't mean you have to agree with everything the other person says. It's about acknowledging their feelings and experiences without judgment. Active listening and empathy can transform your relationships. By showing others that you truly care and understand, you can build deeper, more meaningful connections. Incorporate these practices into your daily interactions. Start with small steps, such as truly listening to a friend or family member without interrupting or offering advice. Over time, you'll find that these skills become more natural, enhancing your ability to connect with others while maintaining your own inner peace. This balance is key to navigating the emotional landscapes of our relationships. Finally, remember to be patient with yourself as you develop these skills. Like any practice, active listening and empathy take time and effort to cultivate. Celebrate your progress and continue to grow. Active listening and empathy are powerful tools for protecting yourself from the emotional impact of others while fostering deeper, more compassionate relationships. By embracing these practices, you can navigate your interactions with wisdom and grace, creating a more peaceful and connected life. Lesson 7. Cultivating Mindfulness in Interactions Have you ever felt overwhelmed by someone else's emotions? Imagine being able to stay calm and present no matter what. In this part, we'll explore how mindfulness can help us achieve that. Mindfulness isn't just a buzzword. It's a powerful tool for navigating our relationships with grace and clarity. Mindfulness means paying attention to the present moment without judgment. It's about being fully engaged with what's happening right now. When we practice mindfulness, we can respond to others with empathy and understanding instead of reacting impulsively. Picture this, you're in a conversation with a friend who's upset. Instead of getting swept up in their emotions, you stay centered and calm. You listen deeply, offering your full presence. This is the gift of mindfulness. One simple way to practice mindfulness is through mindful breathing. Take a deep breath in, then slowly exhale. Focus on the sensation of the breath entering and leaving your body. This helps anchor you in the present moment. Another technique is to observe your thoughts and feelings without getting attached to them. Imagine your thoughts are like clouds passing through the sky. You see them, but you don't have to hold on to them. This creates space for a more thoughtful response. In interactions, try to maintain an open and curious attitude. Instead of judging or jumping to conclusions, approach each moment with a sense of wonder. Ask yourself, what can I learn from this? This shifts your focus from reacting to understanding. Listening is a key component of mindfulness. When someone is speaking to you, really listen. Pay attention to their words, tone, and body language. This shows that you value their experience and are fully present with them. Mindfulness also involves being aware of your own body. Notice any tension or discomfort and gently release it. This helps you stay grounded and calm even in challenging situations. It's important to recognize that you can't control others' emotions. What you can control is your own response. By staying mindful, you create a calm space that can influence the interaction positively. 
Practicing mindfulness regularly can transform your relationships. It fosters deeper connections and greater understanding. When you're fully present, you can offer genuine support and compassion. In moments of conflict, mindfulness can be especially powerful. Instead of reacting with anger or frustration, take a step back. Breathe. Observe your emotions and choose a response that aligns with your values. Remember, mindfulness is a practice. It's okay if you don't get it right every time. The more you practice, the easier it becomes. Start with small moments and gradually incorporate mindfulness into your daily interactions. One practical tip is to set a daily intention to be mindful. Each morning, remind yourself to stay present and engaged throughout the day. This simple practice can make a big difference. Another helpful practice is to reflect on your interactions at the end of the day. Consider what went well and what you could improve. This reflection helps reinforce your mindfulness practice. Mindfulness is not about perfection. It's about progress. Be kind to yourself as you learn and grow. Celebrate your successes and learn from your challenges. Sharing your mindfulness journey with others can also be beneficial. Discuss your experiences with friends or join a mindfulness group. This creates a supportive community and keeps you motivated. Incorporate mindfulness into your daily routines. Whether you're eating, walking, or working, bring your full attention to the task at hand. This makes mindfulness a natural part of your life. As you cultivate mindfulness, you'll notice a shift in your interactions. You'll feel more connected, compassionate, and calm. This not only benefits you, but also those around you. Finally, remember that mindfulness is a lifelong journey. There will always be opportunities to practice and grow. Embrace each moment as a chance to deepen your mindfulness and enhance your relationships. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of mindfulness in interactions. If you found this helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to Wisdom Woven for more insights. Stay mindful and stay connected. Lesson 8 Patience and Acceptance in Relationships Have you ever felt frustrated because someone just wouldn't change their mood, no matter what you did, or felt overwhelmed by someone else's emotions? Today, let's explore how Buddhism can teach us to be patient and accepting in our relationships. This approach can bring more peace and harmony into our lives. Imagine you're having a rough day and someone close to you starts sharing their own troubles. It's easy to feel like you need to fix their problems or change their mood, but Buddhism teaches us that we don't need to do that. Instead, we can simply be present and supportive without trying to alter how they feel. Patience is key in these moments. By being patient, we give others the space they need to experience and process their emotions. This doesn't mean we ignore them or their feelings, but we respect their emotional journey without trying to control it. Acceptance goes hand in hand with patience. Accepting someone's emotions means acknowledging them without judgment. It's about understanding that everyone has their own path and their own way of dealing with feelings. Think about how you feel when someone truly listens to you without interrupting or trying to fix things. Feels good, right? That's the power of patience and acceptance. It creates a safe space for others to express themselves freely. Buddhism teaches us that emotions are like waves in the ocean. They rise and fall naturally. By practicing patience and acceptance, we learn to ride these emotional waves with grace, instead of being tossed around by them. Next time you find yourself wanting to change someone's mood, take a deep breath. Remember, it's okay to let them feel what they're feeling. Your role is to be a calm presence, not to solve all their problems. Mindfulness can help us cultivate this patience and acceptance. When we practice mindfulness, we become more aware of our own reactions and impulses. This awareness allows us to pause and choose a more compassionate response. It's also important to practice self-compassion. Sometimes, our desire to change others' emotions comes from our own discomfort. By being kind to ourselves and recognizing our own limits, we can better support others without feeling overwhelmed. Remember, everyone's emotions are their own. We can't always understand why someone feels a certain way, but we can respect their experience. 
This respect is a form of acceptance that strengthens our relationships. Try this simple exercise. When someone shares their emotions with you, just listen. Don't think about what to say next or how to solve their problem. Just be there. You'll find that this kind of presence is incredibly powerful. Buddhism also teaches the value of letting go. Letting go of the need to control others' emotions frees us from a lot of stress and frustration. It allows us to focus on our own emotional well-being. When we let go of control, we make room for true compassion. We can be fully present for others, offering support without strings attached. This unconditional support is a gift we can give to our loved ones. Think about how a tree stands strong and steady, no matter the weather. We can be like that tree, offering stability and support to others while staying grounded ourselves. This strength comes from patience and acceptance. In our fast-paced world, it's easy to forget the power of patience. But slowing down and being present can transform our relationships. It allows us to connect with others on a deeper level. Practice makes perfect. The more we practice patience and acceptance, the better we get at it. It's a skill that grows over time, bringing more peace into our lives and the lives of those around us. Let's also remember that everyone is doing the best they can with what they have. This understanding fosters compassion and patience. We're all on this journey together, each with our own struggles and triumphs. By embracing patience and acceptance, we create a more compassionate world. We become beacons of calm and understanding, helping to soothe the emotional storms of those around us. So, the next time you're faced with someone else's strong emotions, remember, patience and acceptance. These simple but powerful tools can transform your relationships and bring more harmony into your life. Thank you for watching this part of our series on Protect Yourself from Others through the Wisdom of Buddhism. Stay tuned for more insights and practical advice in our upcoming videos. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Wisdom Woven for more content like this. Lesson 9, Self-Reflection and Understanding Motivations. Self-reflection is a powerful tool that helps us understand our inner world and how we react to others. By looking inward, we can better handle our emotions and connect with others more compassionately. Imagine a situation where someone's mood affects you. Instead of reacting instantly, take a moment to ask yourself, why do I feel this way? This pause allows you to understand your emotions before they control you. Reflecting on your feelings can reveal patterns. Maybe you notice you get frustrated when people are late. Understanding this can help you respond more calmly in the future. Self-reflection isn't about judging yourself harshly. It's about observing your thoughts and emotions with kindness. Treat yourself like a friend who is trying to understand what's going on inside you. When you reflect on your emotions, you learn what triggers certain feelings. This awareness is the first step to managing your reactions better. It's like being a detective of your own mind. Buddhism teaches us to look at our motivations. Why do we want to change someone's mood? Often, it's because we care, but sometimes it's because we feel uncomfortable with their emotions. Knowing this can change how we approach the situation. Consider journaling your thoughts. Writing down your feelings can help clarify what's going on inside you. It's a private way to explore your inner world and can be very revealing. Another method is to meditate. Sit quietly and focus on your breath. Let your thoughts come and go without holding on to them. This practice can bring clarity and peace. As you get to know your emotional triggers, you can start to change your responses. Instead of reacting with anger or frustration, you might choose to respond with patience and understanding. Think about a time you felt overwhelmed by someone's emotions. Reflect on what you could have done differently. This helps you prepare for future interactions and handle them more gracefully. When we understand our motivations, we can communicate better. If you know why you're upset, you can explain it more clearly to others, leading to healthier relationships. Self-reflection also helps us develop empathy. By understanding our own struggles, we can better appreciate what others are going through. This makes us more compassionate and supportive friends and family members. 
it's important to be patient with yourself during this process. Self-reflection is a skill that takes time to develop. Celebrate small victories and be kind to yourself when things don't go perfectly. Try to make self-reflection a daily habit. Spend a few minutes each day thinking about your emotions and reactions. Over time, this practice can transform how you interact with the world. Understanding your motivations also helps in setting boundaries. When you know what triggers you, you can set limits to protect your emotional well-being. Sometimes, reflecting on past experiences can offer valuable lessons. Think about a past conflict and what you learned from it. This insight can guide your future actions. Talking to someone you trust about your reflections can also be helpful. They might offer new perspectives and help you see things you hadn't considered. Incorporate loving kindness into your self-reflection. Wish yourself well and acknowledge your efforts. This positive reinforcement can encourage further growth. Remember, self-reflection isn't about finding faults. It's about understanding and improving. It's a journey toward a more peaceful and balanced life. Stay curious about your inner world. The more you explore, the better you understand yourself. This understanding is the foundation of emotional resilience and compassionate relationships. Finally, thank yourself for taking the time to self-reflect. It's an act of self-care that benefits not only you but also everyone around you. Keep going on this journey of self-discovery with an open heart and mind. Embracing impermanence. Letting go for inner peace. Have you ever felt overwhelmed by emotions that seem to linger forever? What if there was a way to find peace even in the midst of emotional storms? Today, we're going to explore a transformative concept from Buddhism that can help you navigate life's ups and downs with grace and ease. Imagine you're standing by a river. The water flows steadily, sometimes calm, sometimes turbulent. Emotions are like this river. They come and go, constantly changing. Buddhism teaches us to embrace this impermanence, to understand that emotions are temporary and ever-changing. Welcome to Wisdom Woven. If you're new here, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more insights into living a balanced and peaceful life. The first step to embracing impermanence is recognizing that emotions, like everything else, are transient. They don't last forever. When you're feeling sad, angry, or anxious, remind yourself that this too shall pass. This simple realization can bring immense relief. One powerful way to let go of difficult emotions is through mindful breathing. Take a deep breath in and slowly exhale. Focus on your breath and let it anchor you to the present moment. This practice can help you find calm amidst chaos. Meditation is another essential tool. It allows you to observe your thoughts and emotions without getting caught up in them. Start with just a few minutes a day. Sit quietly, close your eyes, and focus on your breath. Notice how your emotions ebb and flow like waves in the ocean. Loving-kindness meditation is particularly effective. It involves sending kind and compassionate thoughts to yourself and others. Sit comfortably, close your eyes, and silently repeat phrases like, May I be happy. May I be peaceful. Then, extend these wishes to others. This practice can help soften your heart and ease emotional turmoil. It's important to practice self-compassion. Be kind to yourself when you're experiencing strong emotions. Imagine how you would comfort a friend in distress. Offer yourself the same understanding and care. Remember, letting go doesn't mean ignoring or suppressing your emotions. It's about acknowledging them without clinging to them. Picture your emotions as clouds passing through the sky. They come and go, but they don't define you. Engaging in activities that bring you joy can also help. Whether it's reading, painting, or spending time in nature, find what makes your heart sing and do more of it. These moments of joy can act as powerful antidotes to negative emotions. Connecting with others can provide support and perspective. Share your feelings with trusted friends or family members. Sometimes, just talking about what's on your mind can lighten the emotional load. Practicing gratitude can shift your focus from what's wrong to what's right. 
Each day, take a moment to reflect on what you're thankful for. It could be something as simple as a beautiful sunset or a kind gesture from a friend. Setting realistic expectations is crucial. Understand that life is a mix of good and bad moments. By accepting this, you can navigate challenges with greater ease and resilience. Another way to embrace impermanence is to stay present. When you catch your mind wandering to past regrets or future worries, gently bring it back to the here and now. The present moment is the only place where you have the power to act and change. Physical activity can also be a great release. Exercise releases endorphins, which can boost your mood and help you manage stress. Whether it's a walk in the park or a yoga session, find what works for you. Sleep is essential for emotional well-being. Ensure you get enough rest each night. A well-rested mind is better equipped to handle emotional ups and downs. Healthy eating can also make a difference. Nourish your body with wholesome foods that support your physical and mental health. Avoid excessive caffeine and sugar, which can exacerbate anxiety and mood swings. Creating a peaceful environment can help. Declutter your space, add some plants, or play calming music. A serene environment can promote inner calm and clarity. Boundaries are essential. Learn to say no when you need to. Protect your time and energy by setting clear limits with others. This can prevent emotional overload and maintain your well-being. Seek professional help if needed. There's no shame in reaching out to a therapist or counselor. They can provide valuable tools and strategies to help you navigate difficult emotions. Reflect on your progress. Notice how far you've come in managing your emotions. Celebrate your successes no matter how small. Every step forward is a victory. Lastly, be patient with yourself. Embracing impermanence and finding inner peace is a journey, not a destination. It takes time and practice, but the rewards are profound. You'll discover a deep sense of calm and resilience that can carry you through life's challenges. Thank you for joining us on this journey at Wisdom Woven. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Together, let's continue to weave wisdom into our lives and find the peace we seek.